Okay, continuing our uh, topic on the American Revolution. Okay, we're going to take a look at, we're going to examine the success of the Green Mountain Boys and the formation of the Second Continental Congress. Okay, the Green Mountain Boys. In 1775, Vermont blacksmith Ethan Allen led a group of uh, known as the Green Mountain Boys in a surprise attack on Fort Ticonderunga, okay, located at the southern tip of Lake Champlain in upstate New York. Okay, um, General Benedict Arnold helped Allen uh, capture the fort. Very strategic fort here, um, uh, Lake Champlain. The British surrendered the fort along the uh, with large quantities of cannons and gunpowder. Here's Ethan Allen drawing a sword, capturing the fort. Okay, the cannons and gunpowder seized at the fort allowed the American rebels to break the stalemate at the Siege of Boston, which caused the British to evacuate the city in March of 1776. Okay, the Second Continental Congress meets. Okay, and on 1775, delegates sent King George III the Olive Branch Petition. Okay, with the Olive Branch Petition, the delegates uh, declared their loyalty to Great Britain and asked the king to repeal the Intolerable Acts. And here we are, you see this uh, word in Latin here, a E Plurius Unum, which stands for out of many, one. Here's the Olive, olive Branch Petition. Okay, King George III refused to repeal the Acts. And delegates also set up the Continental Army, naming George Washington as the commander. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the uh, strengths and weaknesses of the Continental and British armies. Okay. <clears throat> the Continental Army, their disadvantages. First off, they had no navy, they had untrained soldiers, and few and little cannons and gunpowder. But they did have some advantages, fighting for their homes and freedom, and also leadership of George Washington. Okay, the British Army. Um, their advantages, of course, they were the most powerful nation on the planet at the time, and uh, you kind of think, how do a bunch of ragtag colonists beat the most powerful army on the planet? Uh, we'll talk about that. Highly trained, experienced soldiers, plentiful weapons and supplies, and the most powerful navy in the world. But they were at some disadvantages. The war was fought far from home, less reasons to fight hard, and also risked constant attack. <clears throat> Okay, the Battle of Bunker Hill, which occurred on Breed's Hill uh, on June 17th, 1775. It's one of our first major battles of the war. Okay, the Patriots were short on gunpowder, and they were warned by uh, Colonel William Prescott, don't fire till you see the whites in their eyes. Okay, the British won the battle, but lost over a thousand troops. And you're going to kind of see how um, this becomes a uh, an insurgency, really, and the colonists. How long can they hold out and beat, beat, you know, kill as many British and beat the British as much as possible in order for the British government to get fed up and finally leave? Okay, this battle showed Britain that the Patriots would not be an easy enemy. <clears throat> 